use that color report you know, that we're out of compliance? Well, what I discovered was, if you look at the influent from the collection system on the way into the system, for some reason in that same period, those values were really high. Now that's, that's, that's just saying that looking, like looking for love in the wrong places, we were looking for the problem in the effluent, and the problem wasn't the influent. Something, according to these data, put a bunch of organic matter into the collection system that got down to the, to the lagoon. That's all I want to deal with that for now. That what was the most on that? The time of the, uh, the sewage influent from October. 6 to April of 9. No, October 8, I can right there. See, October 8, to April of 9. These are the input values. They're, they're really high. They're higher than they've ever been. You know, so EPA missed it, DEQ missed it, we missed it, everybody missed it. But that's not the solution. That's just part of the problem, I'm saying. So I wanted to leave this for now and deal with that there is another way to do this. and. That's what I've been pointing out. A wetland does the same thing to the water as the lagoon does. But to understand what I'm talking about, I want to get you up on about the same level I am. The values that we're getting our violation notice on is this TSS, the total suspended solids. That's how cloudy it is. And I put three, six, nine, ten bits of something in there, organic matter. Anybody can look at it and see how cloudy it is. That's the TSS. So that's what we measure. The influent that I just showed you that was real high and the effluent. In 2007, when EPA came here, they said, we're going to change the rate that you have to remove stuff. You've been working at 2000 or at 80, 65% removal rate. We're going to move that up to 85%. What that means is if we have 10 things coming in from the collection system, one of them could be there for 90% removal. What happens in the system is not all of it. It becomes soluble. The sand on the beaches doesn't dissolve. So when something like sand silicon dioxide comes down in the collection system, it just plumped down to the bottom. So that's the problem we have in the blues right now. They're filling up. All I'm saying is the data does not support that there's a problem because they're filling up. The data is about the same through the whole, from 1999 to 2009, there's no significant difference in the data that the lagoon is removing, except that the place I showed you, that was because unknown more organic matter came in. So the test that we're doing, this test that we're getting the violations on, the 120 violations that they said was the TSS, how cloudy it was. <laughs> when I looked at the data, our percent removal during this time that I showed you, you know, where we are out of in violation, our percent removal was in excess of 98% then. When they said that we had violations, 120 of them, we had 95% removal. Why is that? If you take this and open it and then pull it back this way, I want to now spend a few minutes with one over. Uh, with this notice of violation. Now I have the chronology of that on a longer paper, but here's the here it is in a nutshell. EPA was here in 2007 and said, "You guys have a new permit. You're going to remove 85 percent." In that permit, it said that you will deliver to us a a plan of how you're going to do this, quality assurance plan, and you're going to deliver us, to EDQ and to us, you're going to deliver 
to your operation and maintenance plan. Nothing happened in 2007. DEQ, EPA asked DEQ to come and find out what's going on at this plant. And so they did. So DEQ came and they looked and said, oh yeah, you're taking a grab sample, you should be taking a composite sample. It doesn't matter what that means, we were doing it wrong. The manual said don't do it that way. Still nothing happened. Salmon didn't respond to EPA until the notice of violation. And by that time, EPA said, you have 120 violations. One of them <laughs> was not getting the paperwork in. The 120 he's counting is on the back of the violation, and it's this stuff. <laughs> we had four of them, and he said they were monthly averages, so the way, he, the way EPA does it, if it's a monthly average and you have violated one of them, that's 30. <laughs> if you look at the data, he just chose the first four values in his table. Had he chose the rest of them, we'd have like 500 violations. My point is, and that's what I'm pointing out in this part here, uh, the way they're counting the violations, they're going to find a violation no matter what we do. They found 120 of them when we had 98% removal. Now that confuses, <laughs> look on your face is what, I, what confuses me too. So let me explain now then, is there any question about what BOD is and GSS is, how cloudy it is and how much oxygen it uses? Anybody? Keller got their ideas, but all I'm saying is I looked at throughout the world uh, the cost that they save for wetlands compared to conventional systems like the lagoon system we have. There's usually somewhere between one half and one eighth the cost. The one I thought you might believe was the Army Corps of Engineers, and that's on this paper here. Calculated, I think they were looking for thousand gallons of effluent, uh, or influent, they said, uh, oh, effluent, I'm sorry. 47 cents compared to a lagoon system like he, we have, $3.24. That's about a one-seventh cost, the Army said. So. If you take the 11 acres we have, it's 12 feet deep. Million gallons per day in there it takes about 44 days to fill it up. That's the retention time. So for us, when it's working right, it's on the order of something like 44 days. The data that everybody uses, somewhere between 30 and 60 days, it says you need to have a retention time with an aerated lagoon like we have. So you know we're in the middle there. Fill it up halfway. Now we're down to something like uh, 20 days. Now we're below the level of the boom. But the removal of the TSS and the BOD is so easy to do. Even the lagoon, when it's broken, is doing it. It's the way EPA is counting it that's causing us the problem. The, the attention time for a constructed wetland, when it's working right, is on the order of this. You know, less than a week to do what we do. That, and the data is for everybody. For these, Lagoons is on the order of 30 to 60 days. To construct a wetland does it in less than a week. And that's that's the data that <coughs> EPA publishes. So when you calculate these things in this time, BOD is less than 15, less than 15. Our current value that we can have is 30 milligrams per liter. That's 30 parts per million. <coughs> 